Welcome to the Resilient Rainer, the premier podcast focused on mental performance for equestrians and improved horse show performance. Whether you're a rookie rainer or a seasoned competitor, this show is for riders who want to take their skills to the next level and achieve their full potential in the show ring. I'm Nicole Burnett, and I'm a master mindset coach who's obsessed with helping you achieve all those horse dreams you always thought were impossible. Join me each week to develop a show-ready mindset and gain the competitive edge you need to compete with confidence. Hey there, Nicole Burnett here, host of the Resilient Rainer podcast. And this week I am looking forward to a nice little shorty episode. So we've had some longer ones recently and wanted to balance it out with a little shorter one for all our listeners. Today, I'm going to talk about why dwelling on your past mistakes or hyperfixating on a particular mistake is causing you to lose confidence and hold yourself back. But you can break this cycle and believe in yourself again. I promise. (laughs) So let me give you an example, a really vivid example. Something that comes up a lot for folks I work with is in the moment when you're at a show, because this doesn't have to even be a big deal, big picture. I go home and I think about and ruminate on all the things I did wrong. That's absolutely a part of this. But I want to give this specific example of a client I had where literally in the moment, she'd be writing her pattern and she would do something a little bit off, right? These don't have to be major mistakes, just kind of, gosh, my timing was a little bit off there. My horse just, you know, pushed into the bridle instead of softening around that turn or whatever it is. But in that moment, you're focusing on that past mistake because the moment that it happens is the moment that it's in the past. (laughs) And when you're riding a run, you can't, you don't have time to dwell in the past. You literally can only afford to be 100% in the present moment. Anything that happened to you one second ago, let it go. It's dead you. Don't even begin to think about analyzing it until later. So this is a really vivid example, which is why I wanted to share this example of how you dwell on that past mistake. You dwell on, gosh, my horse pushed into the bridle through that turn instead of really softening. The minute you start thinking that and you start dwelling on it, it eats at your confidence and you hold yourself back because in that moment, she would just start focusing on that and ruminating on that in the middle of her run, right? In the middle of her go, she's thinking and analyzing her performance instead of being in the moment. And so that means that you lose confidence because you're focusing on all the negative stories you're telling yourself about, I made this mistake, I made that mistake. And you hold yourself back, right? And hold yourself back, I literally don't even mean that metaphorically. I mean that literally very physically. Like when you are thinking about how two strides back, there was a mistake and a blunder, you cannot physically perform the riding that you need to perform to move forward in your go and have a nice run, right? So I mean that very literally when I say hold yourself back. It's not even a metaphor. So that should be a very vivid example of what this can look like. And I was just mentioning this a moment ago that when you dwell on your past stumblings or your shortcomings, you really feed yourself doubt. And what happens is that as you replay all these old mistakes, you train your brain. And what do you think you're training your your brain to do? when you dwell on past mistakes? I'm going to pause for like five seconds and let you answer that. Okay. So what happens is that when you 
replay old mistakes, you train your brain to expect failure. And that erodes your confidence because you're not focused on and thinking about all the ways that you're learning and improving and ways that things can go well and improve. You literally are expecting failure. You're training yourself to expect failure and erode your confidence. And as you can imagine, that is (laughs) just talk about submarining (laughs) yourself, right? Like, oh gosh, that's... (laughs) nothing helps. So it's just, it's a negative loop. Every time you beat yourself up mentally about a fluke or a failure, you feed your fears and you damage your resilience because your self-talk shapes your self-belief, right? How you talk to yourself matters because, again, part of the reason dwelling on past mistakes is so toxic in the first place is it's because whether this is conscious or unconscious, replaying an error or shortcoming over and over, you're strengthening the neural pathways in your brain that are connected to failure. So you probably want to know, how do we stop this confidence killing cycle? And what's key is reframing just reframing your entire relationship with mistakes. And what you want to do is that instead of seeing mistakes as definitive proof of your flaws or your failures, right? Like, gosh, I overcued and my horse kicked out at that lead change. That is proof that I'm a bad rider. No, no, no. Like, never say that. Don't even think that. Or, just blowing past the barrel, whatever it is, like whatever mistake or, you know, that happens, whatever bumble, it is not proof of your failure. It's not proof of unchangeable flaws. The key is to come to view them as invaluable opportunities for growth. Okay. The most successful writers are able to extract the lessons from every error. And I'm going to put that in air quotes because as long as you're learning, is it even a failure? And then they leave the past in the past, right? The mistake served its purpose, which is to teach, okay? And dwelling on it further, it only robs you of the wisdom that that error was offering. So let me give another example. So I'm a rainer, and one of the things we do as rainers is we circle. And we want our cir- we want our horses to understand the circle, right? We want them to feel like it's a happy place. And so a, an exercise that my trainer will have me do is we ride circles and you just put your hand down on their neck and you let your horse circle. And this can be a challenge because you want it, you want to micromanage, right? You want to pick at your horse, you want to do stuff, you want to like mess with them, which is very human. Well, in this case, we're allowing horses to make mistakes. Why? To teach them. And so you put your hand down on their neck and you let your horse circle. And maybe Honestly, sometimes, you know, you're literally tempting fate in a training session because you're like, come on, please make a mistake so I can teach you something, right? So you put your hand down and you're like, all right, is the horse like cutting through center? Is it maintaining consistent speed? Like, so you just, you give them an opportunity to show you what they understand their job to be, right? So again, like I said, like, you know, where's their head? Is it going bobbing up and down? Is their speed steady? Are they cutting through the circles? Are they dropping their shoulders? Whatever it is, you give them an opportunity to make a mistake by not micromanaging the horse. And then when your horse makes a mistake, you correct them and you go back and try again. And Of course, the idea is that you're just very neutral in this, right? You're like, okay, I've tried to teach you X, Y, Z skill. I'm going to give you a little test, but it's not like I'm going to give you a test. It's just checking in, checking in with my old buddy here, right? 
you know, or reliable. And so you give them an opportunity, you see what they do. They either do great and you give them scratches and tell them they're the best pony in the world. Or you're like, oh my gosh, we need to like have a review lesson on, you know, keeping our shoulders up. Great. Let's, let's work on that. And so it's that same, literally the same mindset and the same process that I'm encouraging you to adopt as the human, as the rider. Don't just let the training be for your horse, right? You've got to have the same training for you mentally. So how can you put this reframing into practice? Well, I'm going to give you three steps, three steps to help you stop dwelling and to start growing. Number one, notice when you are replaying a mistake. Just literally, awareness is always the first step here, guys. So notice when you replay a mistake, I want you to catch yourself doing it. And you got to call yourself out. You got to be like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? You know, so for me, they'd be like, Nicole, 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 you are ruminating. You're replaying that blender. Knock it off. Okay. Then that's literally, <laughs> I can't stop myself. Um, that is the second step, okay? So I just, when I said knock it off, that is the second step. Intentionally interrupt the self-criticism pattern. You have to stop this negative feedback loop, okay? So you can tell yourself stop. You can say knock it off, cut it off, whatever you want to say to yourself, but you are explicitly cutting off that negative playback loop. And as you can tell for me, it's literally so ingrained in myself, that like, I can't stop myself from stopping myself. All right. And the third step, okay? The third step here, and again, these are all important. You ask yourself, what can I learn here? All right? Because this is so key, is how do you extract value? Because we're all going to mess up. doesn't matter if, you know, you're a weekend warrior or, or top level writer. Everybody makes mistakes. It's what you do with them that matters. Okay. So ask yourself, what can I learn here? And that you ask that question to extract the lesson from the experience. Then you go to actively reframe it in a constructive, aka a positive reframe. So you're reframing in a constructive, positive way and shift your focus to the future. What can I learn here? What am I going to do differently? All right, let's try again. So with consistent practice, you can retrain your mind to interpret setbacks as opportunities and not reasons to doubt yourself, okay? So and again, those steps were notice when you're dwelling on a past mistake, interrupt the self-criticism, and ask yourself, what can I learn, all right? Mistakes are fertilizer for your growth, when you view them through the proper lens, right? So you, I really want to leave you with knowing that you have the power to stop mistakes, mistakes in air quotes, from stealing your confidence. Actually, what I mean is we all make mistakes. We all mess up, right? We do things we don't mean. What I really mean is failures in air quotes, because it's only a failure if you stop, if you give up, if you don't learn anything. So yeah, we're all going to mess up. Like it's part of being human, but is it a failure? That's, that's all from your mindset. Okay. So you have the power to stop mistakes from stealing your confidence, but it does take diligence. All right, guys, it takes diligence. You have to catch yourself. You have to do the work. All right. So that's your shorty episode for the day. I hope you got some value out of this. If you loved it, leave me a five-star review. And with your favorite thing, if you hated it, send it to an enemy. Um, and join me in the Mental Gym for Equestrians to get the tools and training you need to turn failures into fuel, build resilience, and know your abilities are truly limitless, all right? We just closed the doors on our founding group. I'm so excited to dive in with these wonderful ladies it's going to be so amazing. Um, so hop on over to NicoleBurnettCoaching.com and you can get on the wait list for the next round. All right, let's ride on together. Can't wait to talk to you next week.